This is the exact location that just over a month ago I heard a familiar sound and went to go check it out. You might recall if you saw that video that this is what I found. If you didn't have a chance to see it, you can follow the link in the description below. I asked for your takes on what was going on with that fawn, and some of you weighed in on that, and I told you that in a bit I would give you my observations and my experience of what was going on. So you can clearly see in this image that something is wrong with the legs of this fawn. Specifically, it seems like there are two things going on. First of all, if you notice the knee joint, they're, they seem very much disjointed. Somebody pointed that out. Also, the legs seem very long for a newborn fawn. I've seen hundreds, maybe even thousands of fawns in my lifetime. And many of those I've seen very close up. I've never seen a fawn with legs this long. In fact, I told my wife, this fawn actually looked more like the proportions of a moose rather than a white-tailed deer. The second thing that I notice about this deer is that it was bellowing and, and crying out without any regard whatsoever. When I made noise in its vicinity, it didn't make any attempt to lay down and be quiet. In fact, I actually had to run away from it several times so that it didn't brush up against my pant leg because I didn't want to get my scent on it and I didn't want its mother to abandon it. But I already had a hunch about what was going on with this fawn. I'm nearly 99% certain that this fawn was abandoned by its mother. And that may sound cruel, but I believe that this is actually a practice that takes place when a doe mother realizes something critical is wrong with the fawn. Now in our world, that may sound cruel that a mother would abandon their baby, but deer are survivalists. Every single day, every single moment of every day, they are trying to survive a host of predators. There's something inherent that I believe has been placed within the knowledge of a mama doe. That she knew that this fawn wasn't going to be able to keep pace and wasn't going to be able to grow up healthy. On two other occasions in the last couple of years, I have heard a, a fawn bleeding uncontrollably right after birth. This typically does not happen. Fawns usually bed down at their mother's beckoning 
And for the first week or 10 days of their lives, their mothers are almost completely in control of what they do. I've noticed in my observations of fawns and their mothers that they often, especially the fawn, don't go outside of an acre or so space in that first seven to 10 days. They also don't make much sound. If you hear one bleeding, it typically does so quickly and then it's quiet. Or if it hears something coming, it becomes quiet immediately. In the two other instances where I heard an uncontrollably bleeding fawn, and if you want to add this one, the third one, I found the fawns one day and went back in at a distance to observe the next day on those two fawns and both of them I found their carcasses. They were dead. In this case, I did not find the carcass of the fawn. But currently on this property, there is a big pack of coyotes that we've seen sign of, we've heard them howling, and their droppings are everywhere. It wouldn't take very long for a pack of coyotes, let alone one, to attack a fawn, to consume it, and to leave next to nothing behind. I actually reached out to several deer biologists, as well as a couple of folks that have raised deer over the years. And it's interesting to hear what they have to say. They kind of confirm my hunch that I've believed for the last couple of years. Mama does seem to know when something is wrong with their babies and they abandon them. In one case, a person that actually raised deer, the mother had a fawn and abandoned the fawn immediately. It was a little buck. And so the folks, obviously, took it under their wings and bottle fed it. But they noticed almost immediately, maybe a month or two into this fawn's life, that something wasn't quite right. They couldn't really put their finger on it. It just seemed like something was off with the fawn. And this fawn eventually grew up and became an adult, but it only lived just under three years in captivity and died. Its antlers never grew or developed in a healthy way. It seemed to walk with some kind of uh, drunken stupor, if you will. And though they never were able to diagnose exactly what was wrong with the deer, it seems that the mother knew from the very beginning that had this deer been in the wild, it wouldn't have survived. The instinct of a mother carries over even to those deer that have been raised in high fences. Some suggested that maybe I should find the fawn and turn it over to a wildlife rehabilitation center. Because I didn't see the fawn, that was impossible to do. And even if I did, it would be a really difficult thing to capture a wild fawn. Unfortunately, this is part of the wild world. And this wild world that goes on around us all the time it doesn't waste anything. And so the predators, and even those that feed on dead animals, have their place in the wild world as well. It was a great encounter to see this fawn up close and to hear him bleeding, but my gut tells me that he met his demise. Based on your experience, share below if you will, any time that you've seen a fawn like this, and your observations. I'd love to get a dialogue going.